Hi out there, this is Cynthia Howard coming to you from my studio in Claremont, New Hampshire. And today we're going to talk about our local Claremont elections. It's up and coming on Tuesday, November 3rd, which is just right around the corner. So there's some important information I'd like to get out to you before you cast that all-important vote. Now, as you know, we have the highest property tax rate in the state of New Hampshire, second to New Jersey. It is currently at $41.33 per thousand. Now, we also have the second highest municipal city tax rate at $15.14 per thousand, which is second to Berlin. So it's extremely high, and the only reason it's high is because we are electing the wrong individuals. People that are either government bureaucrats that sit on the council, people that are big spenders on the council, or people that really don't care about how high the taxes go. I don't know what it is specifically, but I will give you some information on the candidates in the upcoming election. Now, you probably are unaware that the largest employer in Claremont is a school district, which is a government entity, and not too far behind is the city municipal side, which is employs quite a few people, hundreds of people. So instead of having a wheel in engineering like Charlestown has or a Sturmruga like Newport has, we have government entities that are our larger employers. Yeah, it's true we have some small firms, but for the most part, the government entities make up the mo most of the jobs in Claremont. Now, in the mayoral race, we have Jim Nielsen and Charlene Lovett. Jim Nielsen has been on the council far too long, and he's continuing to vote for more bigger spending, bigger government, higher taxes. Now, in 2012, he participated in a quorum, a non-duly noticed meeting on the Internet, like a chat room, without notifying the public. And in so doing, he violated the right to know law, 91A2, 3, and 4, as well as his oath. New Hampshire, Part 1, Constitution, and it's Article 8. He violated that, so he shouldn't even be on the ballot. He shouldn't be even considering a run for office, but nevertheless, he is. So I want you to be aware of that before you cast the vote. Charlene Lovett. Now, she is a big taxer and a big spender. She also is a person that proposed a partial smoking ban in your public parks. And she said it was because she was getting less and less people into the farmer's market that she runs. But since she's instituted the smoking ban and they voted for it, it looks like they have less and less people in the farmer's market. So that's counterproductive. With all the other problems we got going on, why are people concerned about taking our civil liberties away? But yet they are. So with the mayoral race, you do not have much of a choice, unfortunately. In the race for assistant mayor, you have Kyle Messier, who is a bureaucrat and who participated in the non-public, non-duly notice meeting that occurred in 2012 with Jim Nielsen. So she violated her oath as well, but she did not step down off the council any more than Nielsen did. She stayed there and people let her stay there. They didn't pursue it and take it to court. And so we have a person who violated their oath, who is running on a ballot in a higher position and she should not be on the ballot. And also, she is a bureaucrat in that her position is funded as a dental hygienist by the government, originally by the state of New Hampshire, now by the county. Her dental clinic leases their space from the Claremont Development Authority, which is another conflict of interest, but as she would probably say, the money doesn't go directly to her, but it's in relation to her so she's going to vote for more spending for bigger government. She's not going to vote for the taxpayers of Klamath. And she has a proven record against the taxpayers of Klamath. So she is one of the people we do not want any more than we do Jim Nielsen. And now another character that's running, who's been on the council quite a few years, is, a, is Victor Bergeron, a former firefighter. He's a retired firefighter. So he's going to vote. He's going to be biased and vote for more spending for the fire department. He never recuses himself, and that should be a conflict of interest, but it's not in city charter, and the state doesn't think nothing of it, so he can run and he can vote for bigger spending and bigger government for the fire department. But 
He's not going to help and work on the side of the taxpayers. But there is someone who's running for assistant mayor that will, and his name is A.J. Moranville. He has a proven record when he did serve on the council many years ago, and he is a private citizen, a business person. He has business skills that will help the city of Claremont really grow. He will make Claremont grow because he will know where to cut back, where to spend the dollar, and reduce the tax rate to help the taxpayers. He's not a bureaucrat. And that's what we want, people that are in the private sector. Just like in the national election where the non-politicians are coming to fruition, so locally, I think the same thing may occur. And I'm hoping it will. In Ward 1 and Ward 3, we have no choice. We have Carolyn Toll and Nick Koloski. They've been on the council too long. They're big taxers and they're big spenders. But we can't vote for anyone else, so they're automatically in the seat. And in the case of Nick Koloski, he's a conflict of interest because he's a call fireman, so he's going to vote for more spending for the fire department as well. And in the race for Ward 2, there is opposition. There's Scott Pope, who again is another bureaucrat. He's a school teacher, so he's going to vote for bigger government because he comes from a government position, a government entity. And not only that, in 2008, he walked away from the people of Claremont. So why would anybody give him the benefit of the doubt in voting for him again? Because what's to prevent him from doing what he did before, walking away from the people of Claremont because he couldn't stand the pressure? If someone cannot stand the pressure, they do not belong in office. Paul Cass is running in Ward 2. He's a business person. He has experience being on the council. And he will work for you. And he is the person that I am supporting. And he is people, he is the people that we need on the council that are business savvy. And in the at-large races, you have the same old, same old, the big taxers, the big spenders, like you have Mr. Reed, he's a big taxer, he's a big spender. You have Mr. Simons, another bureaucrat, he and his wife work for, she works for the school, he works for the county as a sheriff. So he's not thinking out of the box on behalf of the taxpayers, he's thinking about how do we spend and make government grow? And that's just exactly what he will do, make government grow. And you have Keith Raymond, a call firefighter again, like Kowalski, who's going to vote on behalf of the firefighter, not on behalf of you, because he's another bureaucrat. I mean, you're getting the same, same thing all the time by voting for these same individuals. And it's time for a change. Yet, you want to make sure you have the right change. Now, you have Mr. Dameron that's running, and he is a former school administrator in Clama. But, even though he retired, he's currently working for the Grantham School District. So he's another bureaucrat that wants to see government grow. He's not going to vote in favor of lower taxes. And this is not about somebody being a nice person or somebody that's a friend. It's about someone that has the tenacity to fight for lower taxes, and you're not going to get that with Alan Dameron because he's a bureaucrat. Same as Bruce Temple. He's running. Now, the other thing is he led the charge against Mr. Dietz for just advising to put up a stop sign. He's a bureaucrat because he came from the city of Claremont as a public works director. He now works in Lebanon. So he's still a bureaucrat. And he's still going to vote for more spending and bigger government and higher taxes. He's not going to work on the side of the taxpayers. Contra no, no matter what they say, they are not going to do that. And then you have a fellow by the name of Ian Gates. He wants a public information officer. He was reported in one of the publications locally saying that. So public information officer, another bureaucratic position, more taxes, more spending, when you already have a city manager that can do that and a mayor that can do that, that should be doing that, and any citizen can go into the city manager's office and request a 91A and get public information. It's not nothing secret. Government, according to 91A, is supposed to be open and transparent at all times. So why pay someone to do the job that somebody else should be doing now or anybody can readily find the information for if they go in the city manager's office? That's ridiculous. And so you don't want someone like that either. We have a gentleman by the name of Tom LaCasse who is a business person who has business, business skills, who knows how to set budgets, who will fight for lower taxes and he is running at large so we would appreciate that you vote for him because he will fight for everyone in Claremont he will fight for lower taxes because he comes from the private sector just like AJ Moranville does just like Paula Cass does 
So it's entirely different when you come from the private sector. You want to pinch pennies. You want to make sure your dollars count and you get the best bang for your dollar rather than spend and not care because it's somebody else's money and the bureaucrats do that. So you can't keep electing the same people and expect different results or the same type of people and expect different results because it won't happen. So we're giving you a choice here. We're giving you a choice of three individuals who will work hard to make Claremont grow and work hard to make Claremont a better place. And isn't that what we all want? that Claremont grow and become a better place. But you can't get that result with high taxes, with more regulation, with more spending, more government buildings that people have to pay for. It's not like the, the private sector where a company is paying and bringing in revenue and helping out to grow the tax base and helping to lower our overall cost. <clears throat> and they'll want to come here. They'll want to come here because we'll have lower taxes. I mean, this place would be booming if we had lower taxes. Not what they're saying, moving ahead, moving forward. Because moving ahead and moving forward is not working. It's only working on their behalf to pocket more money to make their government capacity, their government position grow. And it's time that we people stand up and say enough is enough. We've had it up to here and we can't take it anymore. So let's vote for people who will stand behind us and stand on our side. And that's Tom LaCasse, A.J. Moranville, and Paul LaCasse in War Two. Make sure you get out there, tell your friends, tell your family, share this podcast on Tuesday, November 3rd. And this is Cindy Howard and it's been a pleasure talking to you and have a wonderful Friday and enjoy it on election day and can vote because you have somebody to vote for. Thank you so much for listening and we will be having another podcast in not in the not so distant future. Thank you so much.